All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We are all set up and ready to go. Second set of games of the night, Northern Storm versus Phoenix. Joining me for the rest of the cast this evening is Jeff. How's it going, Jeff? Uh, it's all right. You know, navigating a bunch of technical landmines that are uh, way above my pay grade. But thanks to you and the great Trufflesaurus, it seems like we're close enough to all right. be able to keep this going. Excellent. Horseshoes, hand grenades, and League of Legends. That's where close enough lands you. <laughs> All right, so we will hop right into the champion select here, uh, starting in three, two, one, go. All right, and I'll click over there so that the fine folks at home can see it too. We do have the screen set up properly that record for this first game, thanks to Northern Storm being the one that submitted the recording to us. And we'll have to see where the uh, the pick bands end up. Um, do you think Phoenix is going to revert to stick with the fiddlestick strategy they've used the last couple of weeks? Um, honestly, I mean, I hope not because I I think it would be fun to see them actually branch out. But it's been successful, so you couldn't really blame them for, for sticking. I mean, it has been successful, but let's not forget last week Nine Live just absolutely took them apart with it. That's yeah. I mean, it's funny because. Um, I didn't get to cast that particular series, but I remember Gregor Soros straight up telling me like that they were not worried about the fiddlesticks, that they were very confident they could they could handle it. Um, but that has been at least the uh, the minority, the outlier so far. You mm -hmm. know, a majority of times it has been successful. So, yeah, I would like to see Phoenix show us something else, but I wouldn't blame them, I guess, for uh, sticking for with continuing what works. to feel confident with it. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean. With, with, with all due respect to uh, Northern Storm, they have not had a great split. So it's possible Phoenix may feel like they can just quickly, oh, there goes the Fiddlesticks band, so never mind. <laughs> but, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of the players on Phoenix maybe play a little greedy, feel like they can bully Northern Storm a little bit, and maybe that'll come back to bite them. We do see them banning out some of the more significant uh players on Northern Storm's side, though. We take the, they take the Kled out, they take the Blitzkrieg and the Vagar, all really key picks for Northern Storm. Yeah, of course. I mean, it seems like, you know, Phoenix has certainly done their homework here. Um, and this is, I know, it's such a, a trap series, to steal a, a cliche term from, you know, traditional sports, where if you're Team Phoenix, you're looking at this matchup against Northern Storm, and you're saying, like, well, you know, we should be in good shape. This is not a playoff team. They have nothing to play for. Uh, we should be fine. But honestly, a team that has nothing to play for is sometimes the most dangerous kind of opponent. Right, and we saw Gale Force show that just in the last game. I mean, or the last, the first game of their set. They absolutely managed to take a game off of White Wolf when they had nothing to really gain from doing so other than helping uh, Blitzkrieg into the finals, or the playoffs. But um, we do see a couple of comfort picks already. That Malphite on Darien, absolutely horrific. Um... Really surprised I let that go through, but when you're banning against Phoenix, there's so many other things to take into consideration. It's hard to ban out everyone they're good with. Yeah, Hohenheim himself just commands so much respect. Um, even especially with the fiddle six this split, which uh, personally I know I'm relatively new compared to yourself and and many others in the LCUS, but I hadn't seen him pull that out before this split, mm -hmm. and it just adds another thing that you have to respect about this mid laner. Yeah, Fiddlesticks was rel was pretty new for Hohenheim as well, but then also, as we've said many times before, Fat Lee, that's why there was that Udyr ban, uh, mm -hmm. Darian with the Malphite and the Maokai, but even so, I mean, he did great things with uh, with some other more aggressive uh, top champions as well, so you got to look out for all of that. Um, we do have the Kennen pick. I'm a little surprised to see that. Yeah, I mean it's it's funny because that's that's something you've been uh you've been wanting, right? Well personally. <laughs> not necessarily wanting, expecting off of the ADC, but that's on uh that's Blitzkrieg, that's not Northern Storm here. Uh fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> well, um it's also interesting to go back a minute, um, you know, with Fat Lee getting that Amumu. We talked about the Darien Malphite, Fat Lee getting Amumu, those are two characters that they ran so often with the fiddlesticks to <laughs> set up that incredible wombo combo composition. So it'll be interesting to see how they work around those huge AoE ultimates without the Fiddlesticks to then, then jump on top of it. Yeah, I think Anivia, um, who was picked up by Hohenheim here with the return of the Icebird, um, <laughs> does have some of the same utility that Fiddlesticks has. Um, able to trap opponents with big AoE burst damage. Um, so I think they should be able to pull off similar combos if they want to. I'd be interested to see if they try to play it that way. Um, 
Also worth noting, we do have a couple more notable bands here. Alistar taken away from Alon Z, um, mm-hmm. and then the uh, the Zaya and Shen bands over there against Northern Storm. Um, not sure about the Shen ban. I, I don't know if we'd see him support here, but we'll have yeah. to see. I don't know. I mean, I guess I I have seen Sig Tau Lord play that. Shen support, I believe. So maybe they're just with having taken away the Blitzcrank already, they're just trying to get him as far away from comfort as possible. But I think the Alistar ban is certainly noteworthy because we've seen uh, TARDIS being very effective on that pick while also uh, occasionally struggling on, you know, any others. Right. Absolutely. Um, the simple fact of the matter is is that you got to try to get Phoenix out of comfort zones to get, take games off of them. Um and especially when we saw last week, playing from behind is not something they're great at. They did pretty poorly earlier in the split as well, uh, before they switched to that Fiddlesticks lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's entirely possible that they will be able to um, make something happen there. Uh, we'll have to see. Yeah, it's to go back to the Fiddlesticks ban, even though it's sort of a moot point at this point, I think it is noteworthy that Phoenix really was struggling before they started bringing out that that pick that you know so many of their compositions were centered around so it will be very important for them to prove that they can be a top uh tier worthy team without that it is also worth noting that there is a um sub here on phoenix that could impact mm-hmm. quite a lot um because port swimmer is not has been replaced by minami for this or minami for this uh, this last set of games here, so that may hurt them, but we'll see what happens. Oh, don't tell me. <clears throat> well, let's see what this lineup is. Actually, we're seeing some trades yeah. come through here. I'm actually really interested to see where this is going to go. The Northern Storm lineup is not at all what I was expecting. So it looks as though they are bringing out the <laughs> Kennen ADC. Like to yeah, I mean that's just about the only character they have that could even slightly fill that role. So and. Honestly, I, th- I think it's kind of hilarious the the lineup that uh, Phoenix has here, because with Anivia and Misfortune, this is LCUS C- uh, split one uh, <laughs> killer killing machines here. Uh, uh-huh. Always the ones that are getting banned out. Always the ones who are making some great wombo combos. Misfortune, you combine her with this Amumu and Malphite, and this is going to hurt a lot. But we yeah, I mean goes back to season three i believe it was curse of the sad bullet time was you know legitimately korean meta so you know it worked at one point we'll see if they can make it work again yeah well with no caster delay we can just head straight into the game then once my video player stops misbehaving um (laughs) so uh we'll just head straight into the nero skin showdown uh starting the replay in three two one see how well the loading lines up and see what the skins look like Ooh, um, I think uh, I like Phoenix's. Looks, yeah, this one looks pretty one-sided to me, to be honest. I mean, I, I kind of like been. I kind of like some of some of the looks, like um, Fizz and Gragas kind of have a theme going, but I just like the whole kind of elemental-looking package that Phoenix has here. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I uh, I actually have played so little myself over the last couple months that I forgot Star Guardian Misfortune was a thing, and and I'm a fan of that one. All right, I have paused at 11 seconds for when you get into the game. Uh, all right, uh, I'm actually already ahead of you. So okay, gonna, so where are you at? I'm at 25. You're at 25. So I'm at, yeah, so I'm going to pause here. Okay, I'll uh, catch up to you in just a second here. Got to be careful to not reveal too much of what happens to either myself or the folks at home. Uh, so up, play, minimize. Okay, um, I'll tell you when to start, I guess. All right. <laughs> all right, um, so you're at 25, you said? Yeah. Start in five, four, three, two, one. Start. Okay. All right. So we will see how the movement works out here. Um, Northern Storm, get a little close there. But both both sides are being kind of sneaky. Yeah, both sides grouping is five right away. So no, uh, nobody shying away from some early brawl here. Ooh, there's a bit of a visual glitch there on uh, L on Z, it looks like. Maybe, maybe my screen's just being weird. Kind of looks like he's still got the invisible glow on him. Nope, nope, <laughs> it's still there. That's weird. Oh, yeah, you're right. That is 
Wow. Nope, there we go. He got he got it fixed. <laughs> so right. actually, both teams in the other's jungle right now. But Northern Storm's going to get caught here. Phoenix is coming back, and Shaken sees that they're coming back. Pulls out his sword. Yeah, so I don't. Is. I would not engage here if I was. Yeah, Northern now Storm. Phoenix knows they have them split. Yeah, just just keep slowly running away. LNZ did start with hook. Oh, they get the hook down onto. Oh my gosh, this is going to be such an easy first blood. No, oh. maybe not. What a body slam. Oh, the fat man escapes. <laughs> Good with flash. His life flash is <laughs> traded from the supports. Oh uh, man, really great job by Sig getting out of there. Yeah, I cannot. But once he got blast coned in there too, I thought it was uh, a done deal. But I almost like the nerve about him. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I almost think the blast cone is how he managed to survive. Disoriented the team a little bit. Yeah, that might be right. Actually, I thought it was a death sentence, uh, not to use a pun there, but but actually it, it probably helped him. But it does obviously disrupt the bot lane quite a bit. A, a very unusual bot lane as well, of course, with the <laughs> Kenan Gragas. But uh, we'll see how it works out for him. Obviously, um, they have a different uh, ADC over there on Phoenix, and also LNZ is only on his second favorite champ, I'd say. So. Yeah, I mean, these are hardly standard bottom lanes on, on either side, I would say, to be honest. Even, you know, on the side of Phoenix, it's Thresh Misfortune, which is not too strange, but still not what you would expect to see at Worlds, per se. Mm -hmm. And while I did like Phoenix's skins quite a lot, I do want to give a shout-out to uh, Shaken's Aatrox skin. It reminds me very much of uh, Kratos from Devil May Cry. Looks very cool. <laughs> I have to say personally, um, this is one of the first times I've gotten to see Shaken on a carry top lane in this split, personally. Uh, I know he's played them, but personally it's the first time that I've casted him um, doing so. And I'm excited to see how he does with this Aatrox because it's such a high skill or high potential champion up there. Yep. Yeah, definitely. B bit of engagement oh, actually. Oh! So much pain down onto Darien. Oh, the flash in isn't quite enough. 22 hit points survived by there. Very exciting. Um, oh, Hohenheim may go down Hohenheim here first. Is, yeah. Does gonna pop get the egg. egg at least. And Sigtown knows that's an, or Sigtown Infinite knows that's enough. Get the egg, be happy about it. Yeah, you don't want to sit in that ranged minion wave there trying to be greedy. Did use the ignite for it. Death Sentence comes out and lands onto Fan. He could be in trouble, but looks like they will just be able to walk away. We have Flash just traded on uh, in multiple lanes here. Where yeah. Hardus and Sigtau have both used theirs, basically synced up, and now Shaken and Darien are synced up as well. Yeah, a lot of trades here going really early on here. Oh, and here comes this, the gank in the mid lane, but it looks like Hohenheim's going to get away. Yeah, Hohenheim, a good job just keeping his calm. Walking around that pillar. It looks like Sigtau Infinite wasn't really on the same page as Chaos there. Wasn't ready to really jump in right away as soon as that pillar came down. Yeah, not to manage. Both of them don't really deal a lot of damage early on. You're, you're not going to be, oh my god, a level 2 Fizz is attacking me. <laughs> that worried about it. But Yeah, early on Fizz is so dependent on the playful trickster damage. Oh, and if here you comes aren't Fat to land that. Yeah, Shaken Now Sir um, does not have walk. flash. Remember, they just, traded it earlier. Yeah, just just walk out. Again, it's two tanks fighting one tank. They're 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 mm -hmm. they're fine. Um, maybe if I can take two seconds to catch my breath here, I can remind everyone <laughs> that this game, sponsored by Old Host, um, helps you host and build your own websites. Uh, go to oldhost.net and you get some promotion details that help out the LCUS while also setting up your own website. Woo. Okay. <laughs> now you guys can go back to killing each other. <laughs> How polite of them to have uh, 40 minutes ago <laughs> agreed to that. All right, we'll see. I mean, Fat Lee is more than willing to sit there. Uh, Shaken does manage to dash out, though. That nice extra little bit of mobility that reworked Aatrox has. Yeah, this is interesting to me that Fat Lee is sitting up here this long because there isn't that much kill potential. Oh. Yeah, Hook lands down in the bottom lane. Tardis might have pulled himself too far in, though. As Chaos is here, he's just going to chase away Hasaki, and Tardis will be able to walk away up the river, so... Uh, I don't agree with giving up there. Um, th they may have forgotten that Tardis does not have his flash. Mm -hmm. um, I think they could have gotten him if they had chased, but, I mean, if, if you're not thinking about what summoners are available, obviously you're just going to flash that hit. 
Yeah, I think the maybe the mistake there was the split focus, where Chaos sort of focused on Hisaki, whereas I think if they would have all just gone for TARDIS, yeah. who did not have Flash, as you pointed out, might have been able to pick up first blood there. Oh, uh, Sigtown Infinite might be in a little bit of trouble here, but he is Fizz, so he should be able to jump over any bandages that are thrown his way. We'll see, though. Is level 6, which is a big uh, turning point there for Fizz once you get that ult available. A lot more damage on Darien here. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. What, what are you doing? up in the top lane. Oh, just decides to take the resurrection. Okay. Yeah, just going to get the little bonus health, I guess. Shake in there. That, that was an interesting choice. I would have just kept running. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, what do I know? I'd also like to say it's really exciting that in the last couple uh, weeks here of Split 4, We've seen two Aatroxes in the last two weeks compared to, you know, zero in much of the rest of the split, or even the LCUS period. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I always think is interesting and I'll, honestly fun um, about the LCUS is that you see players like Shaken, like, you know, many others here, picking up on things that they see, whether it be at the pro level or from their own solo queue games and things, where um, particularly, you know, at Worlds, at the professional level, Aatrox has been such a power pick. Mm -hmm. And you would have to imagine that that has influenced the increase in popularity here at the LCUS even. Yep. I mean, we did have a couple of Aatrox show-ups before his rework as well, but not sure. really since his, his, his rework. And as you said, you know, more influence uh, from other sorts of players, the, the more likely you are to see it in things like the LCUS or in other tournaments. Mm -hmm. Even just in your average solo queue match. So Darian's roaming a little bit earlier than he normally does. Um, probably looking, yeah, looking to shut down Sigtown Infinite here with any sort of bait. Oh, does not get the troll pull. We'll do it now, though. <laughs> yeah, they need yeah. To, they need to time their disables a little bit better if they're going to lock that fizz down. Yeah, it's so tough with the playful trickster. Such a such a powerful ability. Ideally, you would have waited for him to use that aggressively there and then gone in, but it's difficult to ask your top laner to sacrifice too much time in that situation to just sit there and wait. Don't worry, Alan Z, only, you know, 26 people saw you've misplaced that ward. It's fine. <laughs> right. So Sh up in the top lane, you know, we've, we've talked so much about Shaken being such a, um, you know, dominant top laner, very, very good in the LCUS, and Darian, you know, we, we've talked about his tendency to fall behind in lane uh, in terms of CS and things. And that early solo kill could really be, you know, uh, a snowball that gets rolling on the side of Northern Storm here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, Darian falls behind, I'm not going to even say by design, but he's very good at making things happen even when behind. That being said, Shaken is using the range of Aatrox's kit to great effect. He gets a little bit of chip damage every time they run into each other. Yeah, oh. I think Tao actually goes in, gets a nice trade onto Hohenheim. Didn't use his ult, I'm really surprised. And a hook comes out, they do catch onto Sig Tao Lord. Flash is back available for the Gragas, and he will body slam away, but the last auto attack is not going to be enough. Oh. Heal forced out from Fan. Ignite does not kill him. That's been two, I'm not going to say failed, but not accomplished Ignites from... Alon's either. Yeah, the heal was forced in exchange, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, TARDIS also flashed for that ignite in the final auto attack. Yep. So now Sig Tau Lord will have the flash advantage after they uh, traded them at the very beginning of the game. And as Fat Lee, uh, who has used Gragas quite a lot the last couple of weeks, has shown us, flash on Gragas can be a really big deal. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we saw Phoenix ban away the Shen, um, who has that flash taunt capability, and Gragas has a very similar ability with the flash body slam. So we know that Sigtau Lord will be uh, not only capable of using that effectively, but also willing to. Willing to be brave, willing to initiate fights, potentially even sacrifice his life if he thinks it'll be beneficial. Do have a lot of pings going on here. Fat Lee in the opposing jungle. Uh, willing to steal as much as he can. He even takes the Blast Cone. Sigtow Lord is going to see this just as his ADC leaves, so it's a very very lonely Arctic man. <laughs> yeah, they don't have a minion wave, though, so no threat of a dive right now in Phoenix. They're just going to take away the Krugs, which is a valuable jungle camp. A lot of experience attached to these stone men. I think it's very interesting how Alon Z is hanging out here to help. 
I guess just giving the uh, Fat Lee the ability to get out with that lantern. Good call. Yeah, and knowing that Hasaki can farm freely by himself in lane with that wave pushed up. Fat Lee has not yet used the Curse of the Sad Mummy yet, as far as I'm aware. So it'll be interesting to see where he finds the opportunity to use that first ultimate because it's such a powerful one. We do have a Cloud Drake here, but rather than trying to engage on it, Fat Lee would rather look for a gank. Uh, Tardis looking to initiate one, but just kind of scares him out. Oh! Oh, Death Sentence does land. Oh, look at that damage down. Is going to go the cannon. Yeah, Fan eventually drops the Chaos is here. Curse of the Sad bullet time. Excuse me. Uh, I <laughs> instinctively used the double, but Shaken Not Sir's head shows up now, and Hasaki is in a lot of trouble as this Aatrox is just going to run him down with the Trundle. A nice teleport play nice. to Northern Sword and Top Laner, and it's a 3 for 2 overall. Infinite may be in trouble as well. Pole is available. Okay. Yeah, good job. Just dodging the damage at the end there. I would like to give Arian, up. Arian, I'm not sure if his teleport was available for that play or if it just now came up. It looked as though it was available, but he didn't seem to think that he'd be able to influence that fight much. Um, I would like to give a shout out in that fight to Sigtau Lord. That was a great Grog Assault. Um, it just wasn't a quite able to save Fawn, but really well done. I was very impressed by that. It's a shame it didn't work out better. Yeah, I would agree with you because I started to call Fawn dying about a second or two before he actually did. So <laughs> clearly an effective Gragasol to almost make a liar out of me. First turret goes down in the bottom lane, though. Hohenheim sticking around trying to get a response in the mid lane. He's going to lose his egg again. Darien actually misses a Malphite ult, which you don't see very often. But it does at least force the Fizz off of his mid laner. Yeah, good job saving uh, Hohenheim there. Though I'm not sure Fizz is quite online to deal that kind of damage, but we'll see. Uh, Phoenix now trying to go for this dragon. Something they had a chance for. Oh, Hohenheim gets oh, caught Hohenheim. going back. Yeah, he's stuck around too long. A greedy recall. Tardis is here, gets the hook down onto Sigtau Infinite. It's a 3v3 brawl down here, but Hasaki's about to show up and make the numbers uneven. Shaken is in trouble now. He's going to go down, and that's a nice pickup on the side of Phoenix. They did lose a turret in the top lane, though. Yeah, that was interesting. I don't think that's what... Uh... I mean, obviously, that's not what uh, Northern Storm wanted to have happen there. And for a moment, it looked as though they were going to be able to turn that around. But Fat Lee managed to take one step back and keep himself available long enough to make it a difference. Yeah, and now Phoenix, they're, they've got a good amount of pressure on this mid inner turret. They're not going to get it, but that's a decent chunk of damage. I keep looking at Hisaki's tag and almost calling Team Phoenix rotten, which isn't even an LCUS team. <laughs> so, <laughs> forgive me if I ever do that. But right now, we uh, it's interesting. I love these games where you see teams making plays in different parts of the map, <laughs> responding to each other, but not necessarily directly. I would like to say that it's interesting how there seems to be a, a visual glitch going on with some of the ultimates when they're on cooldown. Like, they have these big white blobs on them. If you look at Darien's, it's showing oh, up on yes, mine. That's, that's kind you're of right. interesting. That is not the normal icon. <laughs> Definitely not. But, Same with uh, Chaos, at least, for me. Right, yep. Uh, but it's a nice way to uh, to see, like, just as a glance, what isn't available. So maybe it's intentional. It's a feature, guys. <laughs> it's a feature. Next level spectator client. All right. So um, we'll see where the game decides to go from here. Both teams dead even. Um, thanks in part, I think, you know, really good farming uh, in some lanes coming off. Bot and mid particularly have a lot of good farm over their opponents from Phoenix. Yeah, and then you see basically the reciprocal up in the top lane, which is something we've come to expect um, with Darien, very willing to sacrifice farm in lane. But we'll see if Shaken can uh, take advantage of that, you know, because we've seen for so long Darien willing to fall behind in farm and doesn't necessarily get punished on it. Oof. But Shaken, known as a carry top laner, is the kind of guy who could. Sigtown Infinite trying to protect this top turret. I think he just needs to get out of there. Yeah, he goes in, actually uses Chum the Waters. Almost used it more as a wave clear, but he's already used Playful Trickster, and now he gets played back, able to use the Q to get back over to a minion, and Hasaki oh. does stick around for one last auto attack. So actually, Sigtow Infinite, mission accomplished there for now. He did clear the wave, but there's another one coming right up. And yeah. now Fat Lee is there. So he delays it for about 20 seconds. But in the end... Yeah, especially because... Um, 
Northern Storm is not able to get this mid turret. However, they are they should be able to get this dragon uh, with Fat Lee up there in the top lane. So really well done there, grabbing that. But now they're going to lose some more turrets. Yeah, not to be overly critical, but I wonder if it was unnecessary for Fat Lee to show himself on the top lane, knowing that you had a Fizz with basically no health and your bottom lane basically full health there. Probably could have taken that one without needing the immovable. Fawn is trying to make something happen here. Uh, does manage to avoid getting hit by the ultimate. But we got the looks of a 4v5 here as Shaken does not have teleport available. Good yeah, tower hits on Fat Lee. I think that Lord throws out the explosive cast, just sort of knocks Fat Lee to the side. I think Northern Storm should just look to be passive here. Just yeah. gotta staunch the push and let Shaken do his thing down in the bottom lane. There is a rotation coming over there now, the bottom lane of Phoenix responding. Oh, he actually decides to go back. I don't know about this. Yeah, you would think do they know? get interrupted. Do they Phoenix, know? Not they don't close. know. Yeah, they're not even interested in checking the brush. Interesting. Maybe they figured he walked all the way back. Um, that was really close. I actually wonder if they weren't aware that Teleport was down uh, for Shaken, and that's why they decided to be a little less aggressive. Um, Certainly but. possible, because the Teleport is almost up now, so it's easy to not quite have that timer mm -hmm. down perfectly. Yep. Absolutely. So we do have... Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a feature. You can watch uh, Hohenheim's every time he uses his ult, it starts turning white. <laughs> um, so, Shaken continuing the split push in the bot lane. I would like to see some more wards down here if he's going to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what happens. Get, getting the, the it's not the same as Riven's we swear wave clear uh, <laughs> quite well. Um, yeah. A ping there to go to the... Uh, to Baron's little sister. We'll see um, if they're actually able to do it, though. Um, Baron coming very soon, so they got to do this in the next minute or so. Shaken getting collapsed on. Yeah, Throws they do the slow. Saki just going to put down a couple shots. Does pop the ult. All right, so that's yeah. something at least. But he's distracting three people. They should get this mid turret now, I would hope. Yeah, this is something that Northern Storm pushed for about two minutes ago. All right, so get out of there, yeah. Big rotation coming. Puts down a ward just to see them all coming. <laughs> uh, and that's the Anivia wave clear, which is almost unmatched in the game. I guess Ziggs is similar. But with certain champions like that, you know, those are the games that uh, you can see go 60 minutes quite easily just because <laughs> it's so difficult to get minions under a tower. All right, so Fat Lee is here to start the Rift Herald. Uh, doesn't have much time to do it, but they should be able to. Yeah, they've got about 40 seconds. We'll see if Northern Storm can get in there and just delay this. Hohenheim walks up. Gets the Comet and the ultimate. Yeah, Hohenheim yeah. delaying with that ult is really powerful. And they managed to get it. Storm are just going to have to let it go. Alright, and once again, Shaken's just like, I'll oh, just keep split pushing. Whatever. <laughs> you guys take Kled away from me, I'll just become a big demon instead. It's actually somewhat surprising to me that with Shaken committing to this split push so much, actually bullet time comes out just to clear the wave. Shaken forced to run up towards the base of Phoenix, being collapsed on by three members now. He's going to have to walk between two turrets. Darian comes out with the unstoppable force, gets it onto the Aatrox, and he will certainly go down. So reaching a little too far there, and Northern Storm are not in a position to capitalize anywhere else. Yeah. Unfortunate for uh, for Phoenix there. We do have, oh, a flash closing in there. We're going to get a big alt, catches two members. W Fawn is still, oh, good barrel. Ends up dying, but that was a really, some really good barrels actually coming out of uh, Sigtail Lord. Yeah, that was an interesting interaction with Fat Lee with the bandage toss there. If you look closely, at least on my screen, it looked like it literally was not on the character model. But it pulled in the Amumu nonetheless, got the Curse of the Sad Mummy down and they do get a kill out of it. I think a big thing that we're seeing here out of Northern Storm is we're not seeing any... I'm not going to say playmakers, but I'm going to say any big play threats at the moment. Fizz has not really come online yet. Mm -hmm. 
Or at least not in the way you expect when you say a fizz is online. Um, we do have uh, Shaken Not Stirred, who is a big threat in solo fights, I would say, but he is continuing to split push rather than actually get involved in those sorts of interactions. Yeah, uh, I mean, the Aatrox is going to be pri primarily a split pusher here, um, but, I mean, certainly capable of pulling off his flanks if he gets in a good position. Um, Fawn on the cannon, you know, it's an AD cannon, so it's not going to be coming out with the enormous ultimates like you might see from an AP cannon. Yeah, we haven't so, yeah, really that's seen... a Tau Infinite probably to find the, uh, the crucial pick mm -hmm. in a fight. We haven't really seen many of those big alts from the cannon at all, actually. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm waiting for, uh, for Fawn to get a little aggressive with it. Yeah, credit to Phoenix here. This game has looked, you know, relatively even for the last few minutes. But with this turret going down, they're about to pull up to about a 2,300 gold lead. Meanwhile, Northern Storm, though, they are not sitting back on their haunches. Going for Baron. I don't agree with this. Well aware of it, yeah. World I mean, Ender pops already from Shaken, and in goes Fat Lee. They get down to the front line, and they've separated the back line so beautifully. Shaken not served all by himself. He will resurrect. Nice kill from Sigtow Infinite, but he goes down as well. Darien limping away. Bullet time comes out just to sort of scare them away. It's a two for one overall. Shaken is still alive, and Darien's got to respect this here. Puts out the shield, but the Aatrox damage is not quite going to be enough. Ooh. Fat Lee finishes it off. Yeah, that was really close, though. Um, obviously not close enough. I think that uh, Shaken may should have maybe, if he wanted to really get something done there, he could have um, waited and tried to catch somebody moving through the jungle there. But instead gets uh, caught out in a 2v1. And now we're going to see what this uh, Rift Herald can do. Yeah, they're going to get a charge onto the inhibitor turret, which is always feels so good. You know, to get that chunk yeah. of that level. Big of damage. Base. Not that, not uh, enough. And obviously, the tur this turret does regenerate. So if they can keep the damage off, but it doesn't look like they'll be able to do that. Uh, and rotating right around to get this top side, which is also very weak. Yeah, Phoenix. I I give them credit. They have moved around the map very efficiently in this game, finding plays while not giving up too much on other sides of the map. Come the waters misses there from Sigtow Infinite. Darien doing his little split push. Big hit on the turret. Looks as though uh, Shaken will be going back to try to contest, but this threat on the top lane turret is still going on, and the top lane turret is not going to last much longer. Yeah, and Shaken does have his teleport available. Darien does not. Darien looks as though... Box actually popped. I, I would imagine that must have been a misclick from TARDIS. Oh, here comes Shaken versus Darien. Let's see what happens here. Uh, both are about equal in gold. 700 gold or so. Shaken decides not to take the fight. Meanwhile, up at the top lane, teleport coming out. I don't think chasing this is a good idea, but they're willing to jump on Hohenheim. Big oh, stun, though. so much damage. Bond goes down, but he got a ton of AoE down. Meanwhile, Fizz is trying to 3v1. <laughs> not 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 quite there yet, uh Sigtow Infinite. Well, Phoenix picks up two there. Nice fight in the top lane. They're gonna get that turret that they came for. Darian very, very um able to handle Shaken right now. You see his itemized almost pure armor. And despite how strong this Aatrox might be at this point in the game, not against the Malphite right now. Yeah, absolutely, and I feel like the game is starting to slip away from uh, Northern Storm at this point. They had a very strong early game, um, but Phoenix is just making all the right plays, and they have a lot of threats. They've got the Starion, they have um, the Misfortune, they have the Ice Bird, obviously, and Fat League just goes in and disrupts, and it's just very hard to come back from that whole package. Yeah, I mean, Darian ends up getting that turret in the bottom lane. Fighting off Shaken Not Stirred under his own tower, eventually forcing him back and taking the turret himself. So yeah, Phoenix really tightening the noose right now as they close in on a crucial game one as they position themselves potentially for playoffs. Yep. Oh, good little <laughs> troll there by uh, Vaughn. We have passed uh, 7k gold lead though, which... <laughs> the holy number. The holy number. <laughs> or the common. The common uh, figure, let's say. <laughs> one Cloud Drake apiece. 
finally able to go back. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Shaken continues to split push. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. At least not at the moment. But Darian has proven, at least in the last fight for sure, that he can now actually handle Shaken. So Shaken's got to look out for that. Get some more armor pen, maybe. So at this point, I mean, Von Hohenheim has almost Flame Horizon, Big Town Infinite in the mid lane. On Anivia, there's bullet Ooh. time over a bunch of the team. Sigtau Lord goes down, Hohenheim just destroys him. Banish Toss will lock up Chaos, he goes down as well. That's a shutdown, actually, onto the Trundle, and you would think they will turn their attention to Baron very quickly here. Yeah, that was uh, basically the combo their team is built on here. Um, especially from that kind of a phantom angle, and now Shaken is going to get a little too excited. Ooh, Spider Sense tingles there. Yeah, well, they popped the uh, the Scrying Orb and saw that no one was on the Baron, so he sort of got an idea that they were probably just baiting in a bush. But now they're onto the Baron, and there is no Scrying Orb to come out this time. Darian's just going to zone them away. Hohenheim likewise against Fon. And this Baron has got to be going pretty low at this point. Under 5,000. And there's no smite on the side of Northern Storm, so there's no steal potential, and Shaken is going to get taken down, will resurrect with the World Ender, but just has to sort of try to run away. Good flash. Flashes over the wall, but there's no blast cone, so he has no way back into the fight. Big Town Infinite and Fon give it up. Baron taken. Close looks to a 10k gold lead now. Rolling. Yeah, Phoenix looks very, very um, oh. well-oiled to start this series so far. Yeah. If Saki gets caught by the Chum of the Water team, may go down here. That's just the Fizz burst. There's nothing you can do about that as an AD carry once you get hit by that fish. Oh, good disruption there by Chaos, saving Fizz on the way out. A lot of ice effects in this game, actually. I missed how many there are. <laughs> three ice-themed characters. Tardis is actually charging in. Gets a two-man play down and then hooks onto his counterpart, Dick Tau Lord. Can Phoenix run down a fight here? Sig Lord. Oh, nice banish off from Fatly. They will finish off. Actually, another hook from Tardis is the one that finishes it off. Death sentence appropriately named. And even without the AD carry, Team Phoenix pushing in under the base. Sig Infinite barely gets out of there in time. Uh, Shaken not stirred is in trouble, but there's a lot of turret damage here. Phoenix may have gone a step too far. Let's see what happens here. The turret may get taken out by the Winions. Fat Lee very low. May go down here. Does end up going down. Dra Egg gets taken out as well. So they take out the turret, but they end up losing two of their major players. Yeah, definitely going a little bit too deep there was Phoenix. And now Tardis uh, going to get caught as well. So the gold lead still just about 8,000, and Inhibitor Shell was correct. The Inhibitor itself stays alive. Northern Storm get a little bit of reprieve, but Phoenix definitely getting a little too hypey there. If I can interpret the pings here for a minute, uh, Alon Z was trying to hook a wolf to jump over the wall there. Yeah, he was, but <laughs> body missed. <laughs> so, Team Phoenix, you know, uh, still certainly in control oh, yes. of this game. But uh, getting quite hypey there, we, we noted how they didn't even have their AD carry for most of that fight. And it was successful initially, but went too far. Northern Storm punished them and get a decent amount of shutdown gold into their coffers. Yep. Uh, only Baron left is on Darien, who of course is a big split pushing threat. Um, we'll see if Northern Storm is able to capitalize on making that one big play. We do have... Um, Minami has picked up the Guardian Angel, so double danger on this misfortune. And Inhibitor is very exposed. See what happens here, we have Shaken coming in from the backside, that Inhibitor is just going to go down. Yeah, I don't think there's any way that in a straight up fight Northern Storm can uh, trifle with Phoenix at this point. I like the call to just bring Darien back to the rest of the team there with the only remaining Baron buff, just fully down that inhibitor. Yeah, and, and I mean... a massive wave in the bottom lane. Yeah, Northern Storm, I mean, really they don't necessarily need to, at least at this moment, take a straight up fight. Um, with the Baron buff uh, being on just one character and that Baron buff almost expiring as well, um, they yeah, it's should about to be gone. They should be able to at least stall out in a siege, but we'll see what happens here. Um, Shaken goes straight in, knocks up some few dudes. A lot of damage going Some on. The, the water comes out, but 
Yeah, it only lands down to the illusion. That's not a big deal. Darien goes in and gets a two-man ultimate. In goes Fat Lee. He gets more damage. Curse of the Sad Mummy. The full combo comes out, and two are gone immediately. Darien in the back line just zoning out the rest of the damage. Shaken not stirred, or excuse me, Sig Town goes down. Shaken also does. Maybe I was just transcendent there in my knowledge, but in any case, Phoenix. Uh, four for zero. Only the support Gragas is left. Game one going to go over to the side of the playoff hopefuls. Yep, I would say so. It's going to be very hard for anyone on Northern Storm to get anything done here. I don't even think they'll be res respawned in time. Nope. And Sigtail Lord is more than happy to just hang out, let it fall, and try to do better in game two. Impressive performance from Phoenix there. Yeah. Very uh, calculated, you know? Very well-paced, other than that one overdive, I suppose. All right. And unfortunately, because it's replay, we don't have any stats for you fine folks. So I do, <laughs> do apologize for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, just start to finish, absolutely Phoenix's game. Um, Northern Storm, which honestly probably isn't surprising many people. But at the same time, you know, Northern Storm had good tempo in the beginning. It just kind of got away from them. And hopefully they'll be able to make some adjustments for Game 2. So we'll take a quick break, folks. We'll download all the necessary material for Game 2, and then we'll jump into that. Should be a minute or two. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 